Hello, everyone. This is Janet Adams for Bald Eagles Naturally. And today's video is part two, what's going on the Anacostia River? To answer that question, we have to do some research and try to answer some questions. Why aren't we getting eggs? What could be causing this? Is something wrong with Mr. President or the First Lady? To answer these questions, we must dig deep. First, let's look at the source of much of the food consumed by Mr. President and the First Lady. They consume mostly fish that they catch from the Anacostia River. The Anacostia River is relatively close to the nest and it doesn't take them very long to fly from the nest to the river. I could make a 30 minute video on the toxicity of the Anacostia River. However, for brevity's sake, the information shows the river is still toxic, even though ongoing attempts are being made to clean the toxic sediment laying on the bottom of the river. The Anacostia River has a long history of being one of the most polluted rivers in the country. From looking at these pictures, you would never guess that this river is polluted beyond reason. The Anacostia River is only the second river in all of the United States to be impaired by trash. These pictures of the trash were taken from April 16th and 17th of this year. And these pictures are posted on Facebook on the Earth Conservation Corps page. You can find pictures and videos. And all along the river, there are toxic sites and toxins in the sediment. In 2018, the Anacostia River received a passing grade, a 63% passing grade, or a D, for its annual health checkup. The river had failed its health check the previous 10 years. However, the Anacostia received an F grade, failing, for water clarity and amounts of toxins and trash in the water. Plans are being made from several organizations to clean up the river, but my question is, is it enough to save the wildlife that is being impacted? There are specific hotspots along the river that still have not been cleaned up. There have been three main problem areas that spilled contaminants into the Anacostia River, the Navy Yard, Washington Gas, and Pepco. There are six known toxic sites along the river. Those six sites center around contaminants and pollution from multiple sources such as past industrial land uses, sewer outfalls, contaminated groundwater, runoff from rainstorms, and landfills placed near the river. So what kind of contaminants are we talking about? PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, are chemicals used primarily as insulation and cooling fluid in the electric industry. PCBs are known to cause cancer. They do not break down for years and thus they remain in the environment accumulating larger amounts at higher levels of toxicity. There is evidence that PCBs interfere with reproduction in wildlife. This map shows an overlay of the United States National Arboretum and how close it is to some of the highest contaminants of PCBs in the area. While the water quality has gradually been improving, the toxicity of the sediment is still alarming. It is not safe to swim in the Anacostia River, and levels of fecal bacteria are alarmingly high after it rains. What is hydrilla? 
You know this green stuff that you put in your aquariums at home for your fish? Hydrilla is another potential threat to our eagles. It is an invasive species of plant which results in ecosystem disruptions. Bird populations are affected by declines in fish population and can be harmed by toxic blue-green algae that attaches to hydrilla leaves. The hydrilla plant has now been discovered to make what is called cyanobacteria and bald eagles are dying from it. The toxic cyanobacteria began appearing in the mid-1990s and bald eagles began dying in noticeable numbers from a neurological disease called avian vacular myelinopathy, AVM. It was discovered in the southeast. Wherever you find hydrilla, cyanobacteria will be there too. Coots, which are often consumed by bald eagles, eat hydrilla. The eagles eat the coots and can develop AVM from eating these coots. The news in this video is not very good for bald eagles. However, we know they are adaptable birds, but they are not infallible. Every one of us should be concerned and hopefully concerned enough to volunteer with local groups that have goals to protect our wildlife. And if you can't volunteer, donate money to a group who is actively trying to protect bald eagles. The Earth Conservation Corps actively does cleanup work on the Anacostia River. And there are other local D.C. area groups that are working to clean up the Anacostia as well. So why haven't we seen eggs for two seasons? We will never know the exact answer to this question. I think it is very possible that Mr. President or the First Lady may be sterile. This may then be the reason we've seen Mr. President not hesitating to mate with other female eagles. We must keep our fingers crossed that maybe we get eggs next season. However, let's hope the Arboretum keeps the cams active so we can possibly observe something new and exciting with the DC Eagles. I will place some links in the description if you care to read about the toxins that are in the river. Thank you for watching and have a great day.